So Blackmagic Design just released a new version of the Blackmagic camera app last night while I was asleep bastards and uh, I just found out so I downloaded it and tested it there's a couple of main features with this update that is really cool so I'm going to talk about the main features first and then we're going to talk about the weird thing at the end of the video and do a quick roundup of the other features so the first one is support for audio monitoring on connected headphones it has a weird feature we'll get into that but for me personally the audio monitoring feature is probably the biggest one in this update I'm using my phone to record with the Blackmagic camera app. And I'm also using a Rode VideoMic Go 2 for all these talking headshots. Now, the problem is that when I go into the media pool to check some of my recordings, I need to unplug my mic to get any audio, which is kind of annoying. Now I could have a set of headphones connected to the mic because it has a monitoring feature and all that, but I just want to play back the clips and listen to them quickly and then go back to recording more clips. That was impossible. I had to unplug the microphone then play back the video, then replug the microphone. And then I had to go into the settings just to double check that the correct audio source was selected. And now I don't have to do that anymore. So it shaves off a couple of seconds here and there, but it feels much more smooth. So how this works is you go into settings, you choose audio, and then you can turn on audio monitor. Then you can select audio output. And if you have a set of Bluetooth headphones connected, you can then choose your headphones and listen to the audio. Now this feature comes with a small weird quirk. If I wanted to just listen to the audio on my phone, using my phone speakers, I can't do that. As long as the Rode VideoMic Go 2 is connected, I can't choose the internal speakers on my phone. I have no idea why. It, it could be an iPhone problem for all I know, a technical limitation of some sort. Not really sure, but it's kind of annoying, so I have to have the headphones available. But I mean, it's better than having to unplug and replug the mic and double check that everything's connected. The other feature is the rack focus controls, which are kind of cool. So how this works is you open up the focus controls and at the bottom, you have a new icon that allows you to open up the rack focus controls. From the top there, you see you have a reset button, which is quite nice. And then you have the three points that you can set for different focus. And below there, you have the trash can you use to delete points if you want to set new ones. Then you have a button to choose if you want to go one direction or back and forth. Now that comes into play when we look at the last button, which is play or move the focus points forward. So you set the focus by holding whatever you want to focus on on the screen. You focus on that to lock it in and then you choose number one. Then you select your next focus point and you lock that in by hitting the triangle with the number two. So now you set two focus points and now you can choose if you wanna go back and forth or just forward. Now with only two focus points, that doesn't really make any difference because when you press the play button, it's gonna switch from one to two and then back to one again and back to two again. So it doesn't really matter. But if you choose all three focus points, then the direction matters when you choose either back and forth or if you choose the ping pong option, it goes from one to two to three to two, to one, to two, to three, and so on and so on. So that can be kind of useful. So above the play or step forward button, there's a timer button, and it gives you the option of setting how much time to use between each focus point. You can go all the way up to three seconds. So that allows for some creative fine tuning. And I haven't tested this out properly on a project because it's completely new, but I'm gonna try this out later and see what happens when we try to do some more B-roll. So those were the two main features, the audio monitoring feature and the rack focus controls. Apart from that, there's an update for uh, the iPhone 14 Pro and 15 Pro. They've added the 48 millimeter lens option, uh, even though those phones don't really have that lens, I think. I don't remember, but still. Yeah, it's a new, it's a lens. Not really a big deal. They also listed smoother animations when switching from horizontal to vertical and back again. It's smoother. It has a sort of a shrink type feature. It looks better. It doesn't look as like, blah. it's smoother. It looks better. It's fine. Now the faster project listing in media tab, I don't really do projects. I mean, I have files, but yeah, probably. I don't know. It's not a big feature, but if it's smoother, it's that's good for those who use it. Now the reduced latency over HDMI feeds, again, not a feature I'm using cause I'm using this setup to see what I'm doing. Yeah, uh, but I guess that's good. I mean, I guess it's fine for those who use it, perfect. 
it's better. You can now display the name, the reel, the scene, the take over that HDMI feed to an external monitor, which is practical. It's good. Thumbs up. But let's get back to that weird thing and how we can fix it. What happens is that I'm filming in log, so I have a display LUT in the camera. I'm using the default Blackmagic camera display LUT for Rec. 709, and that's been working great. It's not super great in camera, but it works and looks better than looking at log footage. And up until now, that's been fine. But what happened was I fired up the app and the it, colors were just crazy. They were so oversaturated and I was like, what, what's going on here? This, this isn't how it looked. For some reason, the colors are super saturated. And as you can see here, the greens and the reds are like bleeding my eyes out. So I went into the settings, I looked into the LUT settings and there was no new LUTs. There's no new LUT that was added and auto selected or anything. So what I had to do was go into the settings and then go to LUTs. Within LUTs, you have a color space tag at the bottom. And for me, in my setup, which was working, it was set to same as capture. And it's been working fine. It looked fine on screen. Of course, it doesn't record the LUT, so it doesn't really matter when you edit it later, but on the screen, it's been looking fine. It wasn't looking fine. So I tried the other settings and set it to Rec. 709 and suddenly everything looked fine again. Now, I don't remember if I had set it to same as capture or if the app update reset this into same as capture. But because it was on same as capture, colors looked all weird. But then as soon as I put it back to Rec. 709, the preview lot works just fine. Apart from that, this is a good update. It's not a huge one, but it shows that Blackmagic designs are continuously working on the app. They're doing these small updates while they're working on a bigger one, which is how most software developers work. If that comes at NAB, I hope so. It would be really nice. I would with some amazing new features, but I'm really happy with the Blackmagic camera app as a, as a camera in my phone. It works great and it's so much better than Filmic Pro, which I was using on my old phone. So all they need to do now, the final sort of big change they could do to the Blackmagic camera app that I would really appreciate is auto ISO. If you lock in the frame rate and you lock in everything else, being able to at least set ISO to auto just for run and gun shooting. So at least you'll get some kind of auto exposure when you need it, that would be great. Apart from that, totally happy with this update. Hopefully this helped you out and I'll see you in the next one.